Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. I hope everyone is excited for the summer, as it's coming up quick. I'm also super happy to announce I have some new merch. If anyone has been following me on Twitter, you've probably seen the design. But I had one of my friends, Danielle, at Picnocline, draw my logo in her kind of cutesy art style. And oh boy, do I love how this came out. And if you like her art, all of her socials down in the description down below. Also, if you like what you see, consider joining our Patreon, as with your help, we can keep producing the videos you enjoy. And if you want to play with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community that loves to talk MTG or whatever else strikes our fancy. And we would love to meet new people. All right, block there, kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Starting us off, we have Kid on Eson, the Traveling Bard. This is an adaptive, efficient, and consistent mono green list designed to combo out with typical green infinite mana combos assembled through Eson's ability. While a bit slower, it makes up for it with multiple tutorable hate pieces like Collector Oof to take the game into the later turns. There, it can take up a beatdown plan, swinging with the powerful green creatures if comboing isn't viable. Next up is Nybar on Garuda, Doom of the Depths. This is actually a list that he's been working on for quite a while, and while some might be scoffing at this casual looking card, the deck top 4 in Training Grounds 1 and top 24 in Mox Masters this May, so it definitely is a real deck. Its game plan is to use Garuda and mill into either more clones, 4 more triggers, or just simply hit big powerful cards like Tidespout Tyrant, Consecrated Sphinx, or Razakath. And with Wizards printing even more non-legendary clone cards, sometimes you can just duplicate your 6-6s six a bunch and smash face. Definitely happy to see an interesting commander see play in this format. In the third spot is Zay on Tyem, Luminous Enigma. This is a creature-based mid-range combo deck that combos with Devoted Druid. This deck has a variety of flavors such as Adnaws, Hate Bears, or Reanimation for Wind Plants. Tyum decks are usually best suited for grind your pods, and since it's all done through activation, it can really hose counterspell heavy lists. And bringing up the rear, we have Hidden playing Tivit, Seller of Secrets. This is an Esper deck that carries a high density of win cons. Plus, having a one card combo with Time Sieve makes Tivit an ever present threat, while functioning as a hard to interact value engine in the meantime. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Zay Moles the Six. Nybar drops to 5, and there is a pregame action as Zay puts a Jamestone Cavern into play, exiling an Arid Mesa from his hand. Kid starts off the game with a Forest, and taps it for a Finhorn Elves. Nybar plays a Marsh Flats, and casts a Jeweled Lotus. He decides to crack his fetch for a Tap Water Grave, and hands the turn over. Zay has a Bayou, and casts a Carrion Feeder. Hidden plays a Mana Conflux, and takes 1 to cast a Mana Vault. Kid has a Gaius Cradle's Land and casts an Allosaurus Shepherd. Now not fearing counter magic, he taps out to cast his commander Yisan. Nybar plays a Cavern of Souls and names Demon. Zay plays and cracks a Verdant Catacombs to grab a Savanna, but shortcuts as he plays a Circle of Dream Druids for 3. Hidden has a Vault of Champions and takes 1 to cast a Dothy Voidwalker. Stop it. Hidden is pretty happy about the Dothy, although he does find out it doesn't stop Gruda's ETB reanimation. A basic forest comes out from Kid, who goes into the tank thinking of some sort of line, as he then casts a Chrome Ox. Mm, a lot of, that, lot of <laughs> decisioning here on the Chrome Ox. I was thinking about it way more than I had to. Then for three, casts a Trinisphere. Nybar and Zay both let it resolve, but Hidden thinks he cares about it, as he casts a Force of Negation. He exiles an offer you can't refuse to counterspell the spell. With Kid ending his turn with combat, sending his shepherd at Hidden, who takes the hit. Nybar plays a City of Brass. That's jellyfish mana. The Watery Grave is then tapped to cast a Soul Ring. And with 6 mana, he gets him an uncounterable Demon Kraken. Gruda's ETB happens and everyone mills 4, with the notable hits being Hidden milling a Displacer Kitten. Nybar nabs the cat with the rest of the milled cards going into the Dothy zone. Zay plays a basic forest and casts his own commander, Tyem, with Kid at his end step, activating Yisan to hopefully avoid an opposition agent if Hidden untaps. Kid grabs a Quarian Ranger as his one drop. Hidden has an underground river and just wants to hold up mana as he passes the turn. Kid enchants a forest with a wild growth, 
He does debate moving to combat, but fears Hidden's open mana and decides to hold off. Nybar has a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it to grab an Underground Sea. He likes where he's at, but unfortunately can't really do any Displacer Cat shenanigans at the moment, and decides to move to combat. The Kraken heads at Hidden, who still has no blockers. And on Nybar's second main, he casts a Phantasmal Image, which enters as a copy of Garuda. He does have to sacrifice it due to the legend rule, but gets his ETB trigger, with everyone milling another 4 cards. This time, there's a lot of tempting cards, with a Dranith and a Gilded Drake at the top of the list. Nybar ends up settling for a Gilded Drake, who on ETB targets Kid's Yisan. Although Kid definitely has some responses, as he activates Yisan to grab a 2 drop. It's pretty spicy. Without the... Because now you have to you have to grab a... If you're activating Yisan, you're hitting for 2 now, right? You have a burst counter, 2? Yes. I'm sorry. I should have done that. I'm at 2, yes. Yeah. And it's tapped as well. So I'm trying to think of what two drops there are that can save you in this situation. Because your safekeeper, we couldn't you get it now, but it's not there anymore. I don't play enough Yisan to know. Neither do I. <laughs> you definitely do two Yisan activations because you can quarry and ranger activated. Yeah, you could definitely get some value out. I did hit the grab ranger though, so there's that gone at least. I think you hit a Shaya also earlier. You did hit a Shaya, which makes oh, me let's, cry. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is feeling a lot worse now, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, someone didn't care about Dothy until I started milling you. <laughs> this is gonna be safe. I'm gonna get milled by like Garuda. I fill my graveyard. Dothy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna... I was so happy when I saw the Dothy. I was like, yes, I'm not going to mill Tyam. Tyam's not going to get anything for me. I, mm -hmm. I've been like really scared to play against Tyam with this deck in particular because it does help Tyam out a lot. Kid unfortunately does not have a way of saving Nissan as he grabs a Collector Roof. And with the Drake still on the stack, Kid activates his Query on Ranger to balance a forest and untap Nissan. And with his Gaia's Cradle, he still has enough mana to activate Nissan again for 3 drop. He grabs a Circle of Dreams Druid and finally lets the Drake ETB resolve, and they swap places. Zay plays an Ancient Tomb and isn't happy about the Dothy, as he casts an Abrupt Decay, targeting the Voidwalker. Hidden is the first to respond, and with plenty of cards in the Dothy zone, he cracks it to let him cast Zay's Worldly Tutor. Although he can cast it this turn, so he waits on that. Then, two more mana get Zay a Hunting Grounds. And at his end step, Hidden fires off a Chain of Vapor, targeting Garuda. My reasoning was to stop a Fierce Guardianship for my turn, and more importantly, the Worldly Tutor puts the card on top. And if Nybar has any kind of instant speed trigger, he can trigger his cat and mill me. Do I care? Because I could just replay him and get the value again. Uh, I guess I will respond. I would like to keep Garuda in play. And to hit in surprise, his ploy works as Nybar responds with a mana drain. He triggers his cat to flicker his commander for another ETB reanimation. This is a stack right here. For yeah. Rexian, Spencer, Archon of Amiria, and Eidolon of Frederick. I'm oh so glad those are all three <laughs> CMC. With Nybar whiffing his trigger, the mana drain resolves and the chain is countered. But Hidden decides to still go for it as he casts a Worldly Tutor to grab a Thassa's Oracle to put on top. Yo, that's sick. I love the bait. Hidden draws his tutored card and goes straight to Thassa's, which resolves and responding to the ETB, Hidden casts a Demonic Consultation. Zay does realize he has a Hunting Grounds trigger and looks to see if he has any responses. He only has one card in hand and unfortunately couldn't find enough counters to activate Tyam. And with that, the table scoops it up and gives the game to Hidden. And before we get on to the game review, I want to thank a special Patreon member, Elif Cruz, for his support of the channel. Game review. Well, I did not expect that to win. I had kept that hand as Tivit, thinking the early Mana Vault would help cast Tivit, and the Dothy Voidwalker would shut down Garuda and Tyam. But I felt that Tivit really wasn't going to do anything when I know Kid was going to grab his Collector Oof. I was fortunate that the Displacer Kid made Nybar want to use his counter magic then and there, instead of holding it up and replaying Garuda later. And for all those hoping to see the Kraken go off, we played more than one game, and boy did I get to see the full extent of what that deck has to offer. I was also lucky that Nybar was holding a Force of Negation, but his Mana Drain was his only other card, which left him stranded. Although, to talk about stranded, unfortunately for Zay, the Dothy really shut down his deck. Nybar milled most of his removal, at least until it was too late, and he really wasn't able to rebuild. Milling also messed with Kid, who lost his Sylvan Safekeeper, which would have let him protect his commander. 
But thanks to everyone that played. And as a reminder, I'm a community ambassador for Monarch Media. And while I can't say anything just yet, they're back and ready to create quality CDH tournaments and events. So if you're interested in finding out more, check the links down below. And thanks for everyone to make it to the end of the video. I'll catch you guys later. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. See ya.